up? Welcome to Jupiter's Corner. My name is Ashley J. I run a magazine, podcast, this YouTube channel, all centered around mental health and just living a more mindful and positive vibed, higher vibed, vibe, vibey life. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Some news that you guys might like to know, and for my new viewers, I'm actually studying to be a meditation teacher, which is so exciting. It's something that I've wanted to embark on for a long time. It's something I've thought about for a long time. And the other day on a new moon, I finally decided to take the leap. And now I am delved into my study. I'm so, so happy. Yeah, I'm really happy. Before I begin this video, I would like to do a quick disclaimer. We're going to be talking about uh, things like body image and self-love in this video. I am not a mental health professional, although it's something that I'd really love to study in the future. It's something that I just like to talk about, just like I'm an older sister or a friend. Please never forget that there is no shortage of professional help that you can seek both online and over the phone. So if you are someone who lives in Australia, I have a list of national uh, lines and also websites that you can go to if you are in need of some professional assistance. But yeah, with my meditation studies, I am gaining a lot more awareness about things like brain waves and how the body reacts to certain things like stress and anxiety and all types of different ways that the brain functions and it's brought a lot of clarity to me um, as to how and why we think and feel certain things at certain times. Also please excuse my voice, I'm getting over a cold, but other than that, uh, let's just dive right into this Q&A. <laughs> following me on Instagram would know that I put out a little bit of like a question thing a couple of weeks ago asking you guys to ask me questions about self-love. Obviously it's a very vast pool to dive into so I wanted to round it down by picking out some questions that you guys had and answering those as my points of discussion. So that is what we're gonna do today. First question is how do you love your body? This is a very broad question. Um, there are many different ways that you can find appreciation in your body. In my humble opinion, <laughs> the thing that you need most in order to love your body is the awareness of your relationship with yourself. The more you work on building a strong foundational relationship with yourself, the more you will look at yourself and think kind things rather than negative things. Because the whole point is you're trying to build a solid, stable, healthy relationship with yourself because as I have spoken about in a podcast episode recently, the whole thing about feeling confident and about owning who you are and being yourself without feeling this pressure um, from the external environment is really looking inwards and creating that really solid relationship with yourself because the more you work on that relationship, the more you'll be able to build upon your external relationships, your relationships with other people and really make those prosper and grow and have the energy in order to do so because you're putting all the love back into yourself. So the more you sit down with yourself and really root out what things you could be doing better in order to treat yourself with more respect that is how you can take the first steps towards loving things like your body and other things that you might be self-conscious about. Maybe you don't like your voice, maybe you don't like the way you look, maybe it's, as you said, your body, um, maybe it's certain mannerisms that you have. Really dig down and figure out what those things actually are and then you can start chipping away at why you might feel this way. Um, and really just try to change your perspective around a little bit. I think we need to find more appreciation for just how intricate and amazing the human body is. I've always been in awe of how the human body works and how no matter how much 
turmoil and trauma we put it through. It's constantly working overtime. It never stops trying to keep us alive and in a healthy state. Just like the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, that's something that I've been learning about, which is basically what signals like your fight or flight response and what then balances it back out. Um, and your body is always doing these things and your brain is constantly changing cycles and moving into different brain waves depending on what state you're in. So really, when you look at the body itself as less of a vanity sort of thing and more of like a working, cognitive, intelligent, functioning thing, the more appreciation you'll have for it in general. And when you think of the grand scheme of just how amazing the body is, the external really starts to seem less significant. But I understand that in this day and age, it's really, really hard to find love in your own body because there are so many ridiculous standards and most of which aren't even attainable because they're fake <laughs> and manufactured. Um, but really just trying to see the body from different perspectives, like seeing it for the way it works, seeing it as works of art. I think everybody is beautiful in its own right. Things that are labeled as like imperfections, cellulite, stretch marks, scars, all of these things are making you, you, and they're things to celebrate, not bash yourself for. What's the point in bashing yourself? It's a waste of time. It destroys your self-confidence. Own what you've got. I've got a fucking gnarly scar on my back. Um, you probably can't see it in this lighting, but I had scoliosis surgery and it left me with a scar along my back and I've never been self-conscious about it. People have asked me whether I'm, I've been self-conscious about it, whether I like to hide it. I like to celebrate it. One day I'm going to get tattoos around it so I can show it off even more. I think it's a work of art. I've got loads of stretch marks all over my upper thighs, on my butt. Um, they're from one wearing a back brace before I had surgery. I wore a strap brace for a year which pulled on my skin and I was wearing that brace for 20 hours a day, something like that. It was dreadful. Um, so that and also from just going to the gym and growing older when I had an eating disorder and then when I recovered I gained stretch marks as well because the weight gain was kind of rapid. Uh, yeah, I don't know, there's so many, it, it all tells a story. Like I can pull these things out and retrace them back to what they mean. And to me, they're all symbols of just how far I've come in life and my strength through all of the things that have been tossed at me. So I think it's a hard thing to grasp and it's not like you'll fall asleep and like wake up in the morning and be like, oh my God, I love myself. It takes a long time, it really does. and. It's just about taking those little steps in your journey. Because um, there might be things that you're doing to feel better, to look better, but the point is that you love yourself at every step of the journey and that you can be happy with yourself at every step of the journey. That's what's important. I hope that helps and it's not like a load of hoo-ha. Um, <laughs> how do you fall in love with life? What a beautiful question. Um, how I've fallen in love with life is really delving into my own beliefs and um, making sort of routines for myself in a spiritual sort of sense. Um, I think really understanding the privilege I've had in life. Um, the fact that I'm even here, able to breathe, able to speak, able to see, able to make these videos, um, all of the beautiful people that I've been blessed with in my life. For me, it's really been a journey of gratitude and really, it's been kind of about being grateful for the bigger things in life, the things that are more obvious to be grateful for, but also the things that we kind of brush over and the things that we commonly miss because they're just second nature, like, um, like having internet, being able to connect with you guys, um, 
having a bed to sleep in, having a family, having love in my life, having beautiful friends, um, having had all of these challenges that have really made me grow into who I am today, even though they were really hard things to get through and at times I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, like these are things that I'm constantly bringing to the forefront of my mind as things that I'm really grateful for and things that I've been blessed with. So I think the more I've delved into my gratitude on a daily basis, the more colour and amazing vibrancy comes into the rest of your life every day because you just automatically become more aware of all of the blessings in your life which ultimately makes life so much more beautiful. So I think it really just starts with gratitude is what I'd say. Just really delving into what you're grateful for. It's a really good way of keeping yourself grounded and in check and it, it'll allow you to find happiness within the smallest things um, and you won't have such unrealistic expectations for what you want your life to be and you'll just be more present uh, I think doing things that make you more appreciative of the present um, and things that make you that kind of force you to live in the present they are the things that allow you to be more grateful and more conscious of what is around you and all of the beauty that is around you. Yeah, even right now, if you want to pull out your journal, if you want to start a new journal, just jotting down things that you're grateful every day. And one thing that Russell Brand said, I was listening to one of his uh, recordings on Insight Timer. And if you want to follow me on Insight Timer, I think my uh, meditations are still getting approval for being on there. So I'll let you guys know when they are up on there. But for now, they're on my podcast platforms, so like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all of those things. Um, but one thing I heard from Russell Brand was um, he likes to find, or try to at least find, a new thing to be grateful every day. So you're not just writing the same mundane list every single day. It kind of makes you work your brain more and dig around in there when you're finding something new to mention every day. And I've been practicing that because I found that when I was writing my gratitude lists as much as I could, I was kind of incorporating the same things every time. And while I'm constantly still grateful for these things, it's really been a cool test to try and think of something new that I'm grateful for. And it makes me think more, again, of the present moment and keeps me within the present to say, hey, this is what's going on in my life right now and this is what I'm grateful for. So that's one thing that you could try as well and see how you go. There are so many ways to see the beauty of life because life is such a blessing. How do you start loving yourself? Loving yourself is such a big journey and it's kind of what I said before of building the relationship within yourself and realizing that the more you become your own ally, the easier it will be to establish all of these seemingly difficult things to obtain like confidence and self-love in all facets, um, love within others, more stability within yourself so less things like trust issues and things like that because you're so much more secure within yourself and you know that even if everybody else around you was to disappear you still have yourself. So that is something that you should definitely start working on and it's something that I'm working on. This is not me, like me sitting here, I'm not saying that I've accomplished, I've like achieved greatness and I'm a fucking guru, like I have so much to work on and I'm, I have so much that I'm currently working on. And that's the cool thing about life, you're always on this constant journey and it's not like you reach a point where you're like, I am 100% sure of myself, I 100% know everything there is to know about the world because what, like, what, what then? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, life is a constant learning journey so just ride with it and, and learn to embrace it, enjoy it, welcome it, um, learn to enjoy welcoming a challenge and learn to accept that feeling uncomfortable can be the platform to your greatest growth in life. And thus comes loving yourself in that journey. 
Um, how do you stop caring about what others think about you? You will stop caring about what others think of you when you stop seeking external approval to calculate your own value or self-worth. This comes with realizing that you cannot and will not be able to please everyone. So you may as well do what you want. Referring to my last video, why you should just say fuck it. These are the things that you need to think of when you're realizing that you're too focused on what other people think about you. Honestly, all I can say is that caring about what other people think is a waste of your time. It's a waste of your life. You are jeopardizing your happiness and you're really losing the beauty of just being 100% authentically you. Because even when you're pretending to be someone else, one, you're going to be uncomfortable because it's not you. So your soul's just going to be like, where the fuck am I? And you're not going to be you're still not going to be able to please everybody. There's still going to be someone who is going to hate on you, even if they have no reason to. So if the same thing's going to happen either way you go, except one scenario, you're going to be happy, then why don't you just go with the scenario that's going to make you happy? And it's obviously not that simple to just wake up and walk out and be yourself. It's scary and intimidating, but another thing that I've learned about is from Brene Brown and it's the FFT, which stands for fucking first time. And it's all about recognizing that when you're in that uncomfortable, icky state, that is the time where you can catch yourself and be like, wait, I'm in a FFT. And naming it just sort of makes it seem more manageable. And you can understand that, okay, I am uncomfortable and I'm nervous. I'm in a first time and first times are never exactly comfortable. <laughs> they're weird and they're uncertain and you're not always gonna be good at it to start with. But the more you practice it, the more familiar it will become and it'll just eventually become second nature. So that's, that's what I can say to that. How do you gain confidence to put yourself out there on social media? How to gain confidence. I've been on social media for a long time. <laughs> um, I was on social media in school. My channel first blew up in school when I was in high school. Um, and at that stage, there were a couple of people doing YouTube in school and actively I was always listening, overhearing them shit talk all of these people who did YouTube and I knew people were aware of mine and I was like obviously people are gonna shit talk my channel and think that oh you're lame like uh. honestly I never fucking cared <laughs> it's never been a concern to me because my passion has always come before caring about what people think like as long my whole thing is as long as I'm enjoying it and as long as it's something that I'm passionate about and something that I am having fun doing then I'm I'm gonna do it I don't care what other people think if I'm not harming anybody and I'm not harming myself then the people who don't like my stuff can not watch it <laughs> and the people who like my stuff can watch it you know what I mean like it doesn't it doesn't necessarily affect me in that way and I think the more you can put aside what other people might think of what you're doing and kind of tune into what you're passionate about then take the leap and go for it because it's gonna be scary it's gonna be uncomfortable you're going to learn what to do and what not to do and what looks good and what maybe doesn't for you um it's a learning process and it's admirable because anyone who's throwing hate at you like what are they doing are they on youtube are they doing any of this stuff half the time no because they don't have the guts to and the people who are going to throw you shade for what you're passionate about are they people you want in your life anyway no so it's irrelevant it's it's redundant just throw it in the trash throw it straight in the bin <laughs> life won't stop if you are contemplating whether you should follow your passion or not because you're consumed by what other people think so all this time you're wasting 
by not doing something because you care so much about what other people think. You could have been out there already getting started, already making your YouTube channel, already making your Instagram, whatever it is you want to pursue, it doesn't even have to be on social media. In all of these things that I'm suggesting, I'm not suggesting that any of them are easy by any means, but just even attempting, and if you fail, attempting again, that shows courage, it's admirable, it's proactive, and the more you try, the more you are likely to succeed. That's just the way it is. How do you forgive yourself for your mistakes? Coming from someone who's made many mistakes, <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes. And a some of the mistakes that I made in my younger years, I say younger years, I'm 22. Some of those mistakes were hefty. My parents watched me make these mistakes. And they were like, she's going to regret that. And I was like, no, don't be silly. I'm not going to regret that. Oh yeah, I regret it. You hit a wall and you're like, eh, yeah, wasn't a good idea. I made a lot of mistakes in my time and things that I definitely kind of, if I could, if I could go back and change things, there are certain things that I would change um in order to save me from that little extra bit of turmoil that i didn't necessarily have to go through but the majority of the time the thing that i constantly say to myself when i catch myself in these moments of like damn i wish i could go back and change that is you can't go back and change it you can't go back in time unless you got a time machine and i wouldn't mess with that because have you seen project almanac and all of that don't mess with that stuff um and you can't like fast forward in time again unless you have a time machine don't do it um all you have is the present you are here you are here right now and if you're not uh actively in the present then you are never going to live because all we have is the present right now the past has already been you don't know what's going to go on in the future so it's a waste of time to even you know, stress about it. What I always say to myself is live life with no regrets. The decisions you made in the past happened so that they could build you and mold you into the person that you are today. And from these mistakes that you've made, you can either choose to grow in a positive way or choose to grow in a negative way. Um, and it's been my goal ever since I noticed that some of the decisions I made made me grow negatively to every time I make a mistake, stop and say, hey, how can I, how can this help me to grow and mature in a positive way and make me stronger and more knowledgeable and wise? So that's what I'd say. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are your biggest opportunity to grow. Failure and mistakes are your biggest biggest launch pads for growth they are going to be your make or break so make it the thing that just accelerates you in life and really gives you that edge um to stand out and to have a lot of strength behind you and some thick thick skin um because in this day and age you need thicker and thicker skin <laughs> own the mistakes you've made be honest with yourself and then say, how can I move from here? Don't stay stuck in that energy and certainly don't stay in a uh, regretful energy because you need to own it, own your mistake that you've made, acknowledge it, and then ask yourself, how can I move from here? And then take those little steps towards moving forward and, you know, leaving the past where it should be. It goes back to having a good relationship with yourself. Respect yourself enough to forgive yourself, to own up to what you've done, and to then move forward and allow yourself to grow in the best ways possible. I find the most self-love when I'm doing right by myself, when I'm being honest, when I'm actively stating what I'm grateful for on a regular basis, when I am putting energy back into myself, that way I can 
fully give others in my life that I love my all. Following my passions and staying proactive and motivated, nourishing my body, treating it like my sanctuary, meditating is a huge part of really establishing a healthy mindset. Just doing these things to actively nurture yourself in all different facets is really the grounding point for your self-love to grow. Um, you need to have these foundations in place. You can't just wake up one morning and still be floating up in the sky of uncertainty and then stick a sticky note on a mirror that says, I love myself and expect to grow from that. You really have to lay down the foundation and strengthen it and take the time to strengthen that. It takes a long time, but you really just have to have patience. And if you respect yourself enough, you will have enough patience to let this process go. Everyone learns these things and builds on these things at their own pace. For some people, it might take longer than others, and that is completely okay. We're all on our different timelines and you should never compare yours with someone else's because it's vastly different. Yeah, that is pretty much all the advice I have for today. I really hope that this helped. Um, it's all just, you know, advice that I get off my own experiences, off research that I've done myself, off people that I've listened to, the things that I really want to share with you guys as well. So if this has helped, please let me know. I love reading your comments. They're all so beautiful because you guys are amazing. All of my social media links will be in the description. As I always say, I've got my magazine, podcast, Patreon, uh, Instagram, all of that stuff in the description. So if you want to check it out, if you want to support me in any way, then please do. The Patreon will give you access to bonus content, early access to the podcast, magazine, extras, things like that. Thanks for sticking around this far. I actually figured since you guys stuck around this far, for the people who have, I wanted to pull some oracle cards for you today because we're talking about self-love. So I thought I'd pull out my Gaia oracle deck. It's got a heart on it, self-love. Um, and I thought I'd pull out like three cards for you. Just some messages that you might need to hear. I don't know, I thought it would be nice if you hear them. Let the universe speak, they say. Oh, ooh, okay, we're taking jumping cards. We're taking jumping cards. I don't feel inclined to take the next two as jumping cards, so I'm just gonna pick them out. The first, ooh, we were talking about a journey of self-love. That is so sick. All right, so we're talking about self-love. We got sacred journey, life cycles, family transformation. That is really, really, really cute. Transformation and a sacred journey. So in this, I'm inclined to say this is your message to Begin your sacred journey towards loving yourself and towards putting energy and love within yourself so that you can extend and expand and give that energy back to your loved ones. Um, and that is the cycle of life. Okay, that's really cute. Um, next one is, oh, goddess of creation. This one is about transformation, creativity, and wholeness. These are all so relevant to what we've been talking about. So yeah, really tap into this new energy that you'll be stepping into when you start this whole process. Um, get creative, come back into your, come back into one with yourself. So like whether that's through meditation, whatever you like to do to really ground yourself and come back to yourself, find that wholeness and get in touch with the goddess of creation. And you are also the creator of your own path. So I feel inclined to say, or I feel guided to say, I guess, that uh, this is your sign to be creative and build your own path the way that you want to build it. And then we got moonlight. Oh, travel, romance, potential. What? This is making my heart so full. I literally feel oh, the energy, the vibes. Okay, I'm getting way too excited. <laughs> okay, Moonlight. So travel, romance, potential. Romance. So the romance within yourself, the romance that you have for yourself, 
and the potential that that holds when you find that love for yourself the potential that you will unlock is just absolutely insane and the places that you can go are absolutely limitless you can travel anywhere you like with this love so oh my goodness they are the cards if these any of these numbers are significant to you we got 22 7 and 36 so yeah i'm oh I bet you guys are happy you stayed to the end of this video for that. Um, <laughs> also, let me know if you want me to do more Oracle deck readings. I would do tarot readings, but I'm actually missing my Sun and Moon card. I don't know how that happened, um, but I need to get a new tarot deck. If you would like me to do Oracle readings like this, I would love to do it because I really love doing it for people because I love getting them done for myself. So if that's something you would like, then definitely let me know. Um, yeah, thank you for sticking around. Um, that was really exciting. Okay, my angels, I will talk to you guys in my next video. Thank you again for joining me. I know I say thank you so much, but it's because I'm really grateful for your presence on this channel. Thanks, like, subscribe, share this video if you like it, and uh, yeah, I will talk to you in my next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>